Back at the Meg's Point Nature Center, it looks like I'm in the dark, but it's because we're gonna be looking at a really special fish. Before we get into that, we need to go over our daily reminders or what we need to be doing out there right now. You really need to cough into your elbow, the full elbow. You need to cover up that, that mouth when you're coughing. We've gotta contain all of our germs, okay? Keep them from other people. You need to wash your hands, use soap and warm water. Don't burn yourselves, but it needs to be hot and do it for at least two minutes, okay? We also need to keep back from each other. We need to keep at least six feet distance, okay? All these things are gonna help us stay safe. We also right now need to be staying at home as much as possible. The state parks are still open, so you can get out to a state park, but you have to follow all of these guidelines that we just talked about while you're at a state park. Just because you're outside doesn't mean that you can't spread or contract the virus, okay? So let's do our part. Let's keep everybody safe. Make sure to check on your neighbors. If you've got plenty of supplies, whatever it might be, reach out to people around you and see if they need help. It would be really great if you could help the people around you. We're all connected in this, just like all of nature is connected and we're connected to nature, and we can help one another get through this. Okay, now, the owl that fell out of the ground that we talked about that was re-nested, it's back up in its nest and it's safe. But you need to keep an eye out for any injured animals. There may be other baby birds falling out of nests. Uh, you may see a bird that hits a window. There's lots of things that you might see an injured animal. And you can contact the DEEP you can contact uh, rehabilitators, you can find it online, but reach out and find somebody that can help you. It's really not good for you to try and help these animals yourselves. A trained person should be doing it, okay? You ready to talk about this fish? I'm really excited. I've been holding on off on this one for a little while because it's such a cool fish, one of the coolest that we have in the Nature Center, one of the really outstanding fish. And I'm sure that many of you out there really like this fish too, although you probably like it for a different reason than I do. All right, this is our striped bass, okay? We're gonna zoom right in on it so you can get a closer look at the striped bass. Where'd it go? Okay. You see him down there? We're gonna flip the... Uh, picture around so you guys can get a better look. All right, so this is a striped bass. And the striped bass, it's a very large fish. Okay, we get these uh, out in Long Island Sound, but this fish is andron andronymous, okay? That means it can move from fresh water to salt water and back. They actually spawn in salt water, although a majority of the time they live in fresh water. For the first two years of their lives, they don't really migrate. They stay in small groups and move around together. But once they're over two years old, they start to migrate back and forth up the freshwater rivers, out into the ocean and back. Okay, so everybody knows that uh, birds migrate. Now we have fish that migrate. We're gonna talk about a turtle that migrates. There are lots of animals that migrate. And androgen, I see I'm not pronouncing the word right. Um, Andronymous, Andrew, don't listen to me say it. I'm gonna spell it as a vocabulary word right next to the, uh, to the video of this and you'll be able to, uh, to look at it right there. And it basically means migrating from fresh to salt water. It's a fish that can go back and forth to both. So again, the MegsPointNatureCenter.org on our Facebook page You'll be able to view these videos. They're all archived there, and you'll get a vocabulary list of the words that we've been using in these videos, okay? So a few other things. I talked about um, the fact that they spawn up in fresh water, so they lay their eggs up in fresh water. They can lay up to three million eggs, all right? That's a lot of eggs every year. Imagine that, three million eggs. Now most of those three million eggs are not gonna grow to a fish that's this size. 
These fish can live up to 30 years, okay? But most of them are not going to get that old or this big for that matter. So they can get, they average about 50 pounds and about 55 inches long. So they can be pretty, pretty large for a fish in Connecticut anyway. That's a, that's a good sized fish. You can see the reason it got its name, the striped bass has stripes all down the sides of the fish. Now along those stripes, there's something called a lateral line. There's another great vocabulary word. The lateral line, and you can't really, I think you might be able to see it right down the middle of the fish, it's a single line. That basically allows the fish to he hear or feel sounds. It gives them almost an extra sense that they can tell what's going on around them. They use that lateral line to find food and to avoid predators. So you think this is a big fish, there's not a lot that can eat it, but remember, those three million fish, when they start out, they're very, very small, only an inch or so long. There are lots of things that need to eat them. So that later, lateral line helps them avoid being eaten, okay? Now, people, the main predator on these is actually people. Uh, there are seals will eat them, and we do have lots of seals in Long Island Sound. Sharks will also eat them. Okay, now he's going to move around a little bit. Sharks will also eat them, but the main predators, those are the, actually the three main predators, are seals, sharks, and people. Give me a thumbs up out there if you guys like to eat striped bass. I know some people really like to eat them. Fish, people really love going fishing for them. Um, I guess they're a fun fish to, to catch, especially when you get a 50-pounder that's you know, up to 60 inches long. That would be a fun fish to catch, right? Okay. If you guys have any questions, you can start sending your questions by anytime you want. When those eggs are laid, it only takes like three days for them to hatch. So they're not in the egg very long. They go very quickly into a, uh, into a little tiny fish. They call them fry. Baby fish are called fry. And it's not because that's how you cook them. All right, do we have any questions about this? Again, this fish can go from fresh water to salt water and back. It will move around. There she goes. Actually, I can't really tell if this is a boy or a girl. Um, I know you guys always want to know whether it's a boy or a girl, but with, with this one, I can't really tell. It is not listed as, a, as an endangered or threatened species at all. It's in, got the least concern category for the international um, list, international endangered species list. So again, for about two years, they're not gonna migrate and then they start migrating. So 50 inches is about the average for them, but they can get quite a bit larger than that. Uh, people here at Hammond Acid have caught, I think the biggest one I've heard of is 72 inches. Um, but I'm sure that they can get, you know, the extreme cases can get much larger than the average. And 50, 55 pounds, that's a good sized fish. There's a lot of meat on them. The people that eat them tell me that this is a very tasty fish. One of the tastiest fish that we have here in Connecticut, in, our, in Connecticut waters. And let's remind everybody that fishing season is open. You do need a fishing license. In Connecticut, you can get the saltwater and freshwater fishing license combined, uh, but then you can go out and start fishing. And you should remember also to, to keep your social distance, even when you're fishing, you probably want to uh, fishing anyway. Someone's asking how fast they go, that's a great question. And I don't have miles per hour for this fish, but this is a fast fish, okay? They need to be able to catch small fast fish and they need to be able to avoid predators like seals and sharks, which are very, very fast. So these fish are pretty quick when it comes to the, to the swimming world of fish. You can see we've got a sandy bottom in this tank, a little anchor there just for a decoration, something for them to hang out around. And we do put small fish in here for them to eat. So there are a couple of fish up near the top that this, this guy could eat if it wanted to. 
And these fish will migrate. They migrate pretty far, actually. Uh, they could go out to, from here. They could go out right out to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, there are some of them will go from the mi middle of the Atlantic all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. And then there are others that will go from way up north down to the middle of the Atlantic and, the, and back. So the same fish tend to do the same migration route. A fish that uh, is from the Gulf of Mexico is not going to come to Long Island Sound, and our fish aren't going to go to Long Island Sound, but they can meet up out in the Atlantic and gather in great big schools there. Okay. So... I'm going to remind everybody, we've got videos on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Um, so make sure that you can uh, go there. You, everything is archived. You'll get to see all of these videos. I'm trying to read a question here as I go. So someone's asking the difference between these and the ones found in big lakes. Um, I believe that these are probably the same. Okay, so striped bass can live in fresh water or, or salt water. So these could be the same species. Again, they're migrating back and forth, so they're not going to, um, they're not going to overlap and go to find a different place. I'm trying to get a really good angle for you guys. Sam's wondering how heavy they are. They get, the average is 55 pounds. So some of you guys probably don't even weigh 55 pounds. Imagine a fish that weighs more than you do. Why do they migrate? Are they following food? Very good question. And you answered your question. They do follow food. So here in Connecticut, we don't get a lot of small fish close to the shore during the winter time. They go out into deeper waters so they don't get a chance of getting frozen. When the bunkers start running and the, and the killifish... Uh, start moving around in the summer and the silver sides and, it, and uh, sand lances come in, then the striped bass returns. So it's really cool. What do they eat? Any small fish. They occasionally will eat things off the bottom as well so they can grab crabs and uh, crustaceans off the bottom. But primarily it's going to be fish that are small enough to fit in their mouth. Before I went live, this guy was uh, flexing his mouth. He was opening his mouth and showing how big it is. He does have a pretty good sized mouth. Um, so they can fit some large fish in there. And the way the big fish eat the smaller fish, they will open their mouth really quickly and uh, while they're moving, get right in there. And they can almost suck the fish in because they open their mouths so fast. All right. MegsPointNatureCenter.org, I'm going to remind you again, Connecticut State Parks are open, so make sure that you come out and visit them. Follow all of the guidelines. We want to give a thank you to the Friends of Hammond Asset for uh, feed, continuing to feed all of the animals while the building is closed. Normally we would be collecting uh, donations, but since we're not even able to be open, the Friends are, are really generous and they're keeping all of our animals, even this guy here, fed. Take a look at those rays. Look at the rays on the back. So we talked about with other fish. I don't think he liked getting filmed there for a second. Uh, those are spiny rays, and if you pick them up, they can actually puncture your skin. So the rays do help if something is trying to eat them. They may fend off um, a fish that's trying to eat them. Some of the smaller fish don't have really nice big rays like that one. And I don't know if you see the lateral line as it's spinning around there. All right. So, again, this is Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center. I want to thank you guys for all uh, logging in this afternoon and, and enjoying this spectacular fish with me. Next Tuesday, we'll be back on 11 and 2 every day, Tuesday to Friday. 11 and 2 o'clock, we'll be doing programs. We're going to go outside and look at some of the plants that we have here at Hammonasset. And I do have a couple of birds here in the Nature Center, which we will be visiting with. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you on Tuesday.